Due to popular demand, I'm going to give you a detailed alignment procedure for the 711B2 chassis front loading mechanism for the older Sony Betamax, like the 2400 series and so forth. This is uh, how to set this up. I get people that ask me to do quick and dirty videos on how to do the alignment on one of these Sony Beta cassette loaders. Because everyone seems to mess up the same way. They all have the same questions. How do you set the alignment? And it's really easy to do. So let's take this one apart. And I'll show you guys how to set this thing up. You can set this thing up in literally only a couple of minutes. So we'll pull the gears off and do it from scratch. I'm not going to pull the... Uh, the mechanism, I'm not going to take the basket out on this or anything. We're just going to deal with the alignment of the three gears. Four gears, actually. So here we have the cassette basket mounted with the two loading arms. How we know that they're in alignment is there's, there's a loading... Um, there's a hole here and there's a, a, a notch on the side of the chassis and when the when the cassette is in its ejected position now this one here I think this front this front piece is not quite set right we're off by one uh, one tooth on this so let's just fix this one right now while we're at it we'll just take this out When I put this one together, I was off by one, one tooth on this uh, side piece. So we can t we can actually lift this one out of the way. We put the cassette. So now the cassette basket itself, we know that the alignment is correct on this. No, if I have it lined up, because the when the cassette is in position, when it's in the ejected position. basket in the correct position. So the cassette basket itself, this lever runs in this track. So when your cassette basket is all the way up, you will find that there is a an alignment point that uh, will line up here. There's a hole here and on this side there's another hole that lines up right here. right? Right there, that cog there lines up with this little little notch, and this cog here lines up at the same time with this hole right there. Okay, so you know your alignment's correct, but that's not the position that you actually have the mechanism in when you put it back together. Okay, first thing we do is we put the lid lifter in. The lid lifter has got this little gear on the end, it's got this little fan gear on the end, it fits on here like this, and what it does is it rides in this groove here. And the lid lifter has to go in. We swing the basket forward so that the lid lifter can catch in here and behind that. Okay, now the basket is completely open. We take the front door and we slide the front door into position and latch it in like that so that it is latched into the first tooth. On the lid lifter so that the lid lifter can open the door. Now the second thing we need to do is we need to put the mechanism in the loaded in the alignment position which is actually this second tooth over that one right there. Okay this second tooth lines up with the hole. Once that's lined up we can then take this other gear place the secondary gear in place and line up the hole with the hole directly below the chassis here. There's another hole there. You can see that it goes through there. And when we do that, the third gear can also drop into place and line up with the hole, which is right down through here, which goes right down through the chassis. And then, of course, the 
the worm gear goes on. But what this does is now when the mechanism is in its completely unloaded position, there's a little bit of give so that when the tape gets pushed in, it will allow the split gear to move. If you don't, if you try to align it using this reference and have the hole lined up here and have the hole lined up here, the mechanism will jam and you'll end up having to really push the tape hard. So this is the correct position for the mechanism. Now we put the worm gear back into place. We put the side cover back on and put the screws in. When fully unloaded, that one will line up with that hole. And on this side, you'll be able to go right through there, you see. But these other ones don't line up. When viewing from this side, we have to actually start to load the tape and get to that second, that second point. And at the second point, you will have the alignment of the three. That one, that one, and that one will go all the way through. See, that one goes through there, that one goes through there, and that one goes through there. So in that secondary position, all three will line up, then you know that it will load true. and it will unload true. And the door flap is, is free when it's an unloaded. Hope this helps you guys with the beta mechanisms with these ones. If you look back at this broken mechanism, the one that has the broken gear, right? If we look at this broken gear here again, This is the broken arm here with the gear that's that's got the tooth missing. That's likely what caused that was it wasn't timed properly. But without this gear, without these teeth that are missing, this mechanism here, of course, will never work. But anyway, that's um, one of the more common problems that failed on these units is the plastic gears. you can see what happens on here is it, if it tries to load all the way down that will skip right there you see that's where it broke that's what that's what happened when that gear what this does is this is the spring tension that holds the tape down and when it would get to that fully loaded position it would skip a tooth and then it would get out of alignment anyway that's how you time the old beta uh, 711b chassis properly and there's a lot of there's a lot out there that are not timed properly because people took them apart and didn't really understand that there was actually a second timing position, and that was this one here. The second groove was the one that was used to set the alignment of the other gears. People would use the people would use this one here that was all the way back and align it this way. And of course, the problem with doing that is that. Um, when it's fully ejected, it's it's still trying to turn the gear back, and then usually what ended up happening was this got broken. This this half gear would snap off because when it's fully unloaded, you want the green portion of this midway gear to be over top of the area of the uh, the main loading gear that have no teeth. So the alignment's done like that. You can see that uh, the teeth are still present. But if the alignment is done here, 
and then this gear is turned and put in the right right timing position right there and this gear is put in its correct timing position there when it finishes the unload cycle the portion without any teeth is uh, exposed so therefore it can provide that spring to start the loading cycle right you get here's this is what I'm getting at right so mistake one people make they look at the tape all the way out they do the alignment using the alignment holes like they think is correct and it's not because as you can see this portion of the gear is going to make contact with the lower part of the green gear and you can't push anything you can't push the tape in it's going to stress the gears that's the loading position and then when it's when the tape is fully loaded or fully unloaded you'll see this gear rotates and now the uh, cutaway portion is not meshing with the green portion of the split gear so then when you push it in you can load anyway just wanted to go over that because I've had a few people ask me what the correct procedure is to do it and that is the correct procedure there's a lot of uh, information floating around which is not a hundred percent and uh, what some of the what some of the people will do what some of the guys will do is they will uh, do it this way I've seen it done this way too they'll go to the main eject position and they'll put that gear on like that and then they'll take this gear and they'll just take this one and put it uh, like that which will work it will work but it's not quite right and what will happen is uh, when the tape kicks out it won't kick out all the way you know it won't push the tape as far back out as it should it'll still work but not the right way mechanism just drops back in we pop the switch this is the detection switch to detect when a tape is pushed in it just drops into place like that and then the cassette mechanism just drops into place just like that four screws hold it in place front loader belt goes back into its position and the top cover goes on to prevent the belt from falling off now this should load a little more smooth than it did before so if we look at the, the way the tape goes in just a very light press the tape goes in and play back and then I'll eject the tape is now completely ejecting as opposed to if it's done like it was with the alignment before the tape only comes out to about there this way it ejects the tape a good half inch which is what you want thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye